Over the last three years, there's been nothing that's impacted our lives more than COVID-19. Whether you're here in the United States or international, COVID-19 impacted all of us in ways that we will remember forever. And at the center of COVID-19, there was no other government agency that had more news coverage and more controversy than HHS. With more than 70,000 contract actions in one year, HHS has 11 operating units, 1,700 contract professionals, and eight small business specialists. And as a small business person myself, if I were trying to figure out how do I work with that organization, I wouldn't even know the first place to start. So today we've decided to bring on Mr. Wayne Berry, Senior Procurement Analyst of National Institutes of Health, also their Small Business Specialist, to break down what you as a small business can do to start selling your products, your goods, your services to NIH. Welcome today, Mr. Wayne Berry. Hello, my name is Wayne Berry. I'm a Small Business Specialist for the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, supporting the National Institutes of Health and Health Resources Services Administration in Bethesda, Maryland. Nice to meet you, Wayne. Thank you for coming on today to the GovCon Giants podcast. Uh, real quick, one of the questions that I have is when I look at your LinkedIn profile, it says Senior Procurement Analyst, right? So what is how is that different? Because again, I'm talking from a newbie standpoint, right? So if I'm a newbie and I look at that title, you said you're the small business specialist, but then it says senior program procurement analyst. And how do you explain it to someone that's unfamiliar with government contract? So that's a great question. So what does senior procurement analyst mean? So I started my career in federal service and con contracting. Okay. Uh, and then we moved over to the small business program. So as a small business specialist, you analyze contract award opportunities, uh, you're doing the market research, uh, and you're also evaluating legislation and policy and how it applies to the program. Okay. So I've been I've been doing this in the small business program across veteran affairs and now health and human services a little under 15 years. Okay. Nice, nice. I like that. Uh, when you were at veteran affairs, was it the same role? So, yes, I uh, started at Veteran Affairs, uh, performing small business program reviews, subcontracting. Um, and, and yes, uh, it, different agencies use the small business program differently, and it okay. expands according to what the agency interprets the law. OK. All right. Uh, what would you say are some of the differences between Veteran Affairs and HHS and IH? That's a great question. So the difference between Veteran Affairs and HHS. So Veteran Affairs has a public law that requires small business consideration for service-disabled veteran-owned and veteran-owned. So VA considers veteran-owned small business first and second. And then there's small business. And then there's other than small business. Mm. Whereas HHS is more traditional, we consider, you know, we don't have any law that requires us to consider any social economic group of it above anyone else. Okay. Okay. Nice. Uh, so tell me, right. Um, I know that we were talking offline about some of the programs that your organization is doing. Can you talk to us about some of the programs that you currently have going on? Um, I know I saw a webinar on one of your LinkedIn profiles. Can you tell us about some of the programs? So more than happy to tell you. So, so if we're talking to someone who's new, right. And they're trying to come into federal opportunities. Um, there's so much I want to say, right? But <laughs> I, we'll just keep it to the we have, we have, we have, we have 45 minutes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. So there's, there's two things I geek out over. I geek out, geek out over history. I geek out over the small business program. Uh, so I will just, I, I could tell you from the rooter to the, to the, how the small business program even got started and how we got to here, but to get to, if I'm a small business owner and I just want to know what I need to know, right? It's at any agency. I think the biggest mistake people make when they come into marketing to the federal government is the thought that uh, it's just one big buyer. When in fact, it's like a bunch of fiefdoms, right? You got uh, 
HHS, Health and Human Services, you have Veteran Affairs, you have Department of Commerce, they all buy things differently because they were created by law to address something specifically different. If so, because they're required to make do something different, they're buying and how they buy is very different. What I would tell a new person is not just what that agency buys, it's how they buy it. A lot of people think that the small business program, so if I say, okay, the federal government has a law that requires agencies to consider small business, there's some fine print to that. The fine print to that is that the small business program is required for full and open competition but there are several different ways of procuring. Okay, keep going. So let's say we talk about general services admi uh, administration, GSA buys, right? Right. That's the that's one of the most uh, easiest ways for the government to buy, because GSA established a relationship with the buyer, with the seller, the the rates, the delivery, all kinds of things are negotiated by GSA. So a federal agency could come in. And they can just, for lack of a better word, piggyback off of the GSA requirement. And then they can start buying from the GSA schedule, right? Yes. But under GSA, the small business program is optional. Mm. The contracting officer is not required to consider small business first under GSA. And um, GSA buys... And IDIQ buys, which are covered under. So we're going to talk about federal acquisition regulations. Federal acquisition regulations, night far part nineteen talks about the small business program, and that is full and open competition. Far part eight speaks about GSA buys, and right there, in far part eight, it says it is at the discretion of the CEO to consider small business for set aside. And then there's one more category. There's FAR Part 16, uh, which is buying off IDIQs and things like that. Under 16.5, it's called uh, Fair Opportunity. So Fair Opportunity, it's kind of opposite. Fair Opportunity is everyone on that schedule has the opportunity to buy large and small. And that the CEO may consider restricting it to small business. So... Why am I telling you all of this? Fair, uh, IDIQs and GSA are the fastest growing categories for procurement and federal service right now. That and category management. And right. in all three of those sections, the small business program set aside for small business is optional to the CO. It is not a requirement. Mm. Interesting. How, uh, how do you separate out GSA from best in class? Considering they're both GSA. I, I guess think, one is a schedule. You're saying like the GSA schedules versus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's all kind of, it's very specific. It's different, but the general point is for a small business owner is, um, and what I would encourage any small business owner is, is to look up, let's say you're targeting the National Institutes of Health. Yes. First thing you need to know about the National Institutes of Health, it has 27 institutes and centers. Okay. People don't, you know, people don't think, they think they don't, uh, National Allergy and Infectious Disease, right? You have uh, National Cancer Institute. Uh, you have the Office of Research Facilities, which is a major construction uh, facility management team. Um I could go on and on. National Library of Medicine, I can go on and on. But each of these institutes was created by Congress to address a specific thing. Uh, right. Now, they they have some things that they buy in common, uh, administrative services, staffing. Right. That's probably the biggest thing that the government buys is personnel. Okay. And that goes across the government. But um it's really important to know that some offices within NIH may go GSA. Some offices may, they say, you know, we love 8A. We'll do sole source all day. And it, it, so I always encourage people that uh, when you identify your top two or three agencies who buys what you have to offer, 
look at how they're buying and then um, position yourself accordingly. If you're not on GSA, but they buy on GSA, you need to get on GSA. Talking people out of doing what's already working. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough, so, that's a tough, tough. That's a low percentage line. shot. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, no, I understand that. Um, so now going back, right, um, there's 27 institutes and centers, uh, knowing what to NIH. buy. And yeah. NIH. And NIH. Yeah. Correct. So NIH is different at HHS than most of HHS. HHS is about 11 operating divisions. Okay. Uh, there are people everyone knows in the news, but they didn't know they were under one organization. Food and Drug Administration, um, Center for Disease Control, Center for Medicaid Services. Um, oh gosh, there's a couple of other ones. Um, Health Resource Services Administration, HRSA. That's an interesting one. Now, all of these offices, most of all of these, nearly all of these offices has one contracting shop who oh, buys. Yeah. yeah, then they have yeah. they have one main contracting shop. They might have a, one or two satellite offices where, you know, there's a few staff people and they got purchase cards. But NIH is different because NIH is kind of like, you ever seen those Russian dolls? You crack one open, there's another one. There's yes, one. yes, 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 right? yes, yes, yes. So, okay. So imagine HHS like that. You crack one open and then you got all these operating divisions, right? Right. But then you get to the NIH doll, you crack that open. There's 27 institutes and centers. Right. And there's 11 contracting shops Ooh. within NIH by itself. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's where it gets, that's, and, and, so you can come across different federal agencies and they're all organized or set up totally different. So that's why I'm always encouraging people learn a little bit about the organization and then get into who buys what you have to sell and then further do what you can to get to know the program office. Uh, I, I know this is, this is counter to what you would think, but I encourage people to spend as little time with the small business program office as possible. Oh, okay. I know, I know. This is no, no. I love it. I like it. So, so my office, there are about uh, for the enterprise of HHS, there are about seventeen hundred contracting professionals. One thousand seven hundred. There are eight small business specialists covering all of that ground. We can't track all the requirements. Uh, HHS did something like 70,000 contract actions. The year before COVID happened, we did like something like 70,000 contract actions. And that was like 2019. When I arrived in 2011, HHS was doing 100,000 contract actions. So, 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 even even when we've gotten better efficiency and uh, we're going through certain vehicles, there's fewer contract actions, but you still got 70,000 contract actions for oh. seven small business specialists, eight small business specialists. Right, right, right. Small businesses are our ears and eyes on the requirement process. Okay. Uh, that's That's one side of it. The second side of it is we can't say yes, right? I don't have, I'm not, I don't have the money. I'm not the program manager. I don't have the money. I can't say, yes, let me, let me get two of those. You want to go to the people who have something, who are selling, who, who are buying what you're selling. Right. So to the best of your abilities, you want to reach out to program, but you want to go to program well-informed. Okay. And this is, this is the difference. I think small businesses don't do. They, <laughs> <laughs> Eric, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This, that's it, okay. No, listen. that's it. Look, look, I know it's tough because, right, um, a lot of times our opinions are not popular, but they're they're accurate. Well, so I need to give you a little bit more information on me then. Uh, okay. So I'm a second generation small business owner. Okay. My mom's had a small business. Uh, my father was a civil servant in Ohio, right? So I had the best, best of both worlds. I had a small business doing real estate, renovations, rental, everything like that. And then 20, 
2009 hit and we all know what happened, right? Right. Yep. So I lived know. It. Say what? I lived it. I lived right. it. Right. Right. There's a lot of burning, rebuilding things after that, yep. right? Yep. Things burned down, right? So I understand what it is for a small business to dedicate time and resources and energy to something. And uh, I, I do my best to give people the most accurate and up-to-date information that they may make an informed business decision. I, I do my best to avoid saying things that I think may work or giving, you know what I mean? Like right, I, right. I want to give people a bridge to nowhere. Right. Right. right? right. So, so what I tell people is, look, the small business specialist, at least at HHS, our job is kind of, we get to help small business by uh, informing them what's informa what information they need to know. But you really want to go and reach out to program when you're marketing your services and you want, but you need to know exactly what program is procuring. If you're coming in saying, look, we're so-and-so, we're awesome, we're amazing, we've done great things in other places. We'd like to meet with you to talk about how we can support your, your mission. Program is going to send you to small business office. Right. Why? What What was missing? That was, that well, was well, I mean, you didn't, I mean, you weren't addressing my mission because, you know, you clearly don't know exactly what my mission is because you couldn't articulate it. Right. 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 So you just made a blanket statement. Right. Thank you, Eric. So, yes, you go back to the small business program office. We'll tell you, we'll have the conversation with you. We have monthly vendor outreach meetings. Um, and every quarter, we have quarterly events. We have webinars, uh, uh, many of them tailored to different social economic types. Service say we're better known, hub zone, women own. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have those conversations where you can ask some general questions of fellow small business specialists, my leadership. Our new director, our Osborne director, he's been around for over a year now, Shannon Jackson, very dynamic guy. Uh, and he comes on to the webinars and he personally sits down with sits down with small businesses and, and talks about uh, the challenges and, and how they could do things. So th at that level, right, there's that. But if you're a seasoned, if you're a capable small business that's that's been around in the contracting experience, or if you're not, here's the tip I'm gonna give you. You wanna find the opportunities that are coming up. You wanna find exactly the program or contracting office where that opportunity is located. And then you wanna send an email to that contracting official. Hey, we see that uh, administrative support services was awarded in 2018. We know that's coming up for renewal. Is it still gonna be set aside for small business? Who is the program office? Would you like to meet? Contracting has to respond to that. If contracting does not respond to that, that's when you forward it to the small business special says, hey, I'm doing, I'm doing the process. Right. I didn't get a response. Can you help me out? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yep. So that's that's uh I think that's how we can help both ways on this. Um for me, you know, I've been doing this for a while now. Uh, I definitely want to share with you some of the things that our agency does for small business and support. If you, if we got a minute, can I share? No, oh, absolutely. All right. So this is the small business customer experience. And it is a web-based tool that... Uh, supports our customers internally and externally. Okay. So, so I can log, so I can get to this without logging in. You can get to this without logging in. Okay. Absolutely. All right. And so let me just real quick for those um, who are listening and can't see what we're looking at on screen. We're at osdbu.hhs.gov. Let me see if I can. So, and I put it in the chat here. I put the link in the chat. So we'll have that. Right. So 
what I love about this system is that if you're a vendor and you met with me, I can keep notes on our meeting. Mm. So when I see you again, we pick right up from where we left off. We're oh, that's now, neat. We're not starting all over again as if we don't know each other. Oh, nice. Right. I um, like that. Also, my fellow specialists can can put in the can can add those notes too. So let's say we go to AIM Innovations. What's great about this system is it pulls the data from System for Award Management. Oh, does it? Yes, yes, it does. Okay. So if a vendor has contract experience, so we're looking at AIM Innovations. These guys don't have any, having earned a contract yet. That's fine. That's fine. We go to this one. So we see they have a contract. All right. With SAMHSA for 1.9 million. Okay. So these guys have experience. Ah. Uh, interesting. Yep. The company information comes up. Look, even the logo shows up, right? Everything coming over from Sam populates here. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, this is this is great. So what we do now when we're we're often asked, uh, program often reaches out to us and says, hey, can you do some market research for us? Can you help us find some 8As? So I, let's say I go under 561, right? Here are all my small businesses who've reached out to me. Let me type in SDB. Here are all my small disadvantaged businesses in our database. Right? Right. Yep. So we so we can so we can basically what I'm saying is we could conduct market research from those vendors who have marketed specifically to HHS. Gotcha. Question. Now, these are the people that reached out to you, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Just making sure. I just want to clarify that for the audience listening. Now, what we also have here on our website is our forecast of contract opportunities. And you can find it by NAICS. You can right. find it by the organization, how it's being awarded. This is pretty, it's it's a nice one. We're getting better with it. We're working on it. Oh, I love it. I, I um This is this is great. Again, you know, I I I think this is um something that everyone needs to have because oftentimes, you know, myself as a small business, I'm reaching out to people, and um, you know, they don't they're not tracking the information or the conversations. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. It, so no, it, yeah, I mean, man, Eric, I meet so many people every year. And I feel awful because it'll be, you know, it might be someone you haven't seen for three years. Right. That was thousands of people ago. Right. And they're right. like, oh, yeah, da, da, da. you're like, oh. but, but here, what I love about this system is you get the notes, you get to come back. And when they come over, they know said, Hey, you went after that requirement six months ago. What happened? How's it going? You know, uh, let's go into one other, a couple of sections here. So late payment assistance for small business by law. Small business specialists are required to run down and make sure that the small business small businesses are paid on a timely basis. Right. Um, so we have this and how you get to that. If you have an interest in a specific requirement, you know, you send this, send us an email with this information. But here's something I want to share with you. So I just showed you the forecast of contract opportunities. Yes. What this here, what this is here is the list of all contracts that are expiring from HHS. You click on this. Oh, I don't know if you could see this. Right, but I saw, I, I can see it right now where it downloaded an Excel, a CSV file. Do you see Excel opening up? Um, No, I saw it on the bottom of your screen. All right. I don't see it opening up. No, here we go, here we go. I got you, I got you, I got you. So you download, you hit that, and then you get to this. This yep. is all the contracts that are expiring at HHS 
within Man. the next couple years. Wow. Now I'm not gonna lie, it's very basic. It's very basic. We're hey, we're learning, we're working on it. That's we're okay. Working. I mean, so, look, that's information that people, I mean, that that's information that people want to see, they want to know, they want to hear about. So I think that's incredible. So this is how we came about this. So the background on this is uh, I spent a couple of years interviewing small businesses, business development owners, um, and I asked them a basic question. How can I do my job better? What do you need from our office to do our job better? Now, obviously, they had some answers and there were some things that just I can't do. Right. Um, I, I'm in the bureaucracy. But right. but what they did say and they, they did need us to do uh, more information, advance notice on upcoming requirements. So I worked with a team and we developed this expiring contract list. This gives you the company name, of the, the name of the incumbent, the contract, or if it's on GSA schedule, it gives you that information. The agency that it's going for, oh, here we go. We got a, a bit of the description of the requirement here. Okay. How it's set aside, right? Right. If it's 8A, small business, 8AN, that's becoming a very popular one, of course, right? What's 8AN? Alaska Native. Okay. All right. Okay. I wasn't, I, I want to make sure. No, I've heard no, no. You, I, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, some people call them ANCs or ANC. So, ANC, right. I just want to see how they're categorized in your database. You know what? And I'm probably going to get corrected in the notes. I know 8A is small disadvantage, right? A A N is either Native American or Alaska Native. Ah, uh, okay. There you go. Okay. All okay. right. Right. So I'm on the spot right now. I'm not sure, but so I'll just give that caveat. That's fair. You, no, no. If, you, if if someone if someone knows in the comments, let me know, and and we can all get better together. That's okay. That's hey, look again. We know it's eight A, regardless of who you know, whether it's an ANC, a native, uh, native Hawaiian. So we do know that um, some sort of a, a tribal entity has it. Yeah, it's different. Exactly. All right, it's different. Super eight A. So contract expiration. This was the biggest thing, Mike. People needed to know well in advance if a contract when that contract was expiring. Sure. And that's what this does. And this. I, I listen. I'd say it's basic because it's in Excel, and I've been rocking with Excel since the, what, the '80s. So it's like you would think that we've come up with something better, but this is where we are right now. But Excel's it, amazing. I love Excel. You can manipulate it. You can sort the data. You can search the data. Pivot tables. I, I we could do pivot tables. Yeah, I love Excel. I don't know how you get better than that. So this is seventeen thousand, a little under eighteen thousand line items of Whoa. opportunities. Wow. So this is this is a, a hidden gem within the system. Love it. Uh, you know this, and this is this is the information that um, you know I'm constantly asking for, right? We people tell us to do the research and get prepared. Well, where do we start, right? What if what tools do we have? Uh, clearly, uh, Sam.gov has had it set up challenges since the rollout from Beta Sam to the new Sam from FBO. Uh, and so, you know, um, FPDS is going through their migration of their different reports. So, I, you know, it's just we need we need some direction. We, we need a little bit more direction. We're not lazy. We want to do our own research. We want, you know, because, hey, yeah, yeah. right. We just need direction. And that's yeah, why yeah. we're here. That's why I'm doing my job is to help inform small businesses of things that I learn of. This is all new to me. So I thank you for sharing. No, and God bless you for doing this, Eric. You and 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 other people who bring light to this process. It's really important. It really matters because um, everyone starts out from scratch. And the learning curve can be years. And a lot of people don't have the time or the money to 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 sink years into figuring things out before they ever get a first contract. Right. Right. So Absolutely. What, what you do and what you broadcast helps accelerate that knowledge and increases their chances of, of being able to support themselves and their communities and their families. Right. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, I will say this. Um, 
when we when people what I encourage small business owners to do is to network, build relationships, develop contacts with other small businesses within their area. Uh, you're a national, you're a national entity, Eric. I mean, I'm in Washington, DC. Right. And I often see small business owners uh, move from, try to come from one place to DC to do opportunities. Mm. And what happens is they sink a lot of time and money and expenses going back and forth. Right. That is, they definitely want to avoid that. Work on, there's there's, there's a very good chance there's a federal presence local to them. Mm -hmm. And they want to work from that angle. Right. Uh, if they do have, if they do have something that has to be marketed to in the DC area, mm -hmm. then they want to look at developing relationships within DC who can market for them. There's business development people. There's all kinds of folks, but uh, definitely get engaged in some kind of um, organizations where there's a sharing of knowledge and a better so that 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 learning curve is accelerated for them. Right. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, makes sense to me. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So that's what our office has going on. Um, I I would be remiss if I didn't say. We also have a lot of uh, information on how capability statements go, additional assistance, resources, links. Uh, our office meets with small businesses every month, the second Tuesday of every month. And we set these dates up like this. Uh, we have what they call vendor engagement second sessions. So every second Tuesday of every month, we give 15 minutes to, to small businesses. They can register. We have a system. Um, they register on our system. They mm -hmm. can pick any or all of the small business specialists that they want to meet with in 15 minute increments and learn about any of the program offices or uh, contracting offices. Talk about specific requirements. It's all open uh, with the exception. I don't, I think we don't, I don't think we do the engagement sessions in September. That's the end of the fiscal year. So, and you said um, set up fifteen minute blocks. Yes, sir. And here we go. We talk about vendor engagement sessions. So we talked about uh, office hours with with Shannon Jackson and the vendor engagement sessions. And this is how, this is the link and everything that you went here. You know what? Let me put this in the chat as well. I think I had a student of mine attend it. I, um, I didn't get the feedback from them prior to this call. <laughs> what happened? I had a student of mine attend one of your uh, vendor engagement sessions. Okay. Um, but I did not get their feedback. So I, I'll be curious to know what was their feedback. Right. As I'm sure you would, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always, it's always, it's always room for improvement. So uh, now hear. do you attend any of these sessions? Oh yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm one of the small business specialists you would be scheduling a meeting with. Okay. Uh, I regularly attend the office hours, our quarterly office hours, because there may be questions that come up that we can, that as small business specialists we support, we can help you with. Okay. Um, now, okay. Hey, go ahead and finish. You know, there was something else I wanted to say too. Um, you know, a lot of people think HHS, HHS is one of the largest buyers of goods and services in the federal government, which makes us one of the largest buyers of goods and services in the country. Great, 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 good, good, good. But there are a lot of people that you're that you're talking to right now who probably uh, are eligible for or apply for grants as well. And I I, I think people don't understand the difference between contracts and grants, right? Contracts are legally binding agreements where a product or service is expected to be produced. Mm -hmm. right? And the government has a budget for those contracts, but grants can be, are generally things that are not profit making, but created for the general good of the, uh, of, of the communities, of local right. national communities, right? 
So where HHS does billions in contracts, HHS does hundreds of billions in grants. So if you're a nonprofit or a for-profit and you're looking to do something for your community, you may want to consider our grants H -H at HHS or grants at other federal agencies or grants.gov. That is a, it, I mean, if people look at it like, uh, I tell people if a deck of cards on a table was federal contracts, the entire table is federal grants. Mm. It is much, you it's a much larger pool than people think or know. That's very interesting. I, I know that a lot of people combine the two when they look at USA spending grants and contracts, right? Um, we talk about contracts, it's like 500 billion. We talk about grants and contracts, like 1.3 trillion or something to that effect. I thought, yeah, I thought, I thought the last budget was 1.7 trillion. Yeah, it could be, right? I haven't, yeah, I haven't checked. It could be 1.7 yeah, trillion. It's, it is whew, massive. Massive, right. Um, here, let, let me also, while I'm here, and while I got you, let me show our small business. I think I got my small business specialist points of contact here. So that you can, okay. So this is our registered for events about Osbu. And here's our staffing information, our grants, our subcontracting. Here's our points of contact for everyone in our office. The offices, the operating divisions that we cover and who does that. So, yeah, I got it. I got, I got to tell you, I work for some incredibly knowledgeable, dynamic people. It, it is one of the best jobs and one of the best teams I've had in a long, long time to work with. So it's, uh, I think with any one of these folks, if you come to them, if you had a specific issue, a requirement, you're not getting, you're not getting serviced by government, by contracting or program. My team will come running. I like that. I like that. Uh, talk to us about um, getting ready for the meeting. I saw up there, it said, uh, be ready to pitch yourself, some of that effect um, in the very top. So when we get ready for those vendor outreach sessions. You know, what are some of the things that we should be doing in preparation for that? That's a great question. Okay, so, you know, if you, you want to stop sharing so we can see each other closer. Sure, 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 sure. Sorry for that. Good stuff. So, um, how do I get prepared for a vendor engagement session if I'm a small business owner? Um, you want to know what requirements the agency needs or has upcoming. You want to know, yeah, you want to have those things lined up saying, hey, this requirement is coming up under your, because th that's going to help you pick which small business specialist you want to talk to, right? So right. you're saying, well, oh, this is a requirement at National Institute of Health. Let me line up this meeting with um, say Natasha Boyce at uh, she covers a couple sections within NIH. Okay, Natasha, hey, this, this, and this, and this. Could you tell me who's the contracting officer or the program office? Could you get me in touch with the program office? Um, when is the schedule for this? When is this coming out on the street? Those are the that's the conversation that you really want to have. And then and then you also want to tell her, you know. Why am I qualified for this? Listen, I've got experience with this. We believe that this, this requirement is going to be the last award for this requirement was 250,000. We've done 3 million in similar work across other federal agencies. So, you know, we've got the experience and the capability to do this as we have in other places. Or let's say you don't have that experience. Let's say we see this as a quarter $250,000 requirement. Um, in the private sector, I did this for 15 years. And I'm just now coming into federal service, but I've been doing this for years and I had a budget of X amount of money for years and I worked for these companies and those companies. So not having any federal contracting experience does not exclude you. What you want to be able to talk about is what you can do and how you would go about that challenge of solving those issues for that, for the, for that agency. Um, yeah. And then, and then of course, 
the one thing I, I would have advised people not to do is to uh, to go into the 8A program as soon as they start marketing to the federal government. The clock ticks on the 8A program. You only got nine years. Um, and I've seen so many small businesses take three to five years just to figure out how the marketing at federal government works. So. Tell me about some of the. You told me about what we should do to prepare and say, um, can you tell me about like a bad experience that you've had with someone showing up or maybe a common, someone comes to you, they come on one of these outreach sessions uh -huh. and um, you almost feel like, wow, I wish we could have helped them more if, you know, we talked offline before the session, right? What is a, not a, I hate to say, what does a bad experience look like? Uh, or one where the small business didn't get as much out of it as they could have had they been more prepared. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, right? so I'm sure you see some common themes, right? Yeah. But you know what, when I think about bad experiences, I think about things I could have done better. Right. Okay. Like I don't, I don't blame, I don't blame the public because okay. a lot of them, you know, yes. I mean, you, you come across people who've been in business for years, their upbringing is, is a certain type, right? Uh, maybe they went to parochial school, so they wore suits every day, all day, came into business. So they know that if they're coming anywhere, they're coiffed, they're, they're certain tied up, right? And then you, I've come across people who, you know, they just left their job. Their most formal attire is a polo shirt, right? And 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 they're they're on a polo and jeans, they're smoking a cigarette, or they, you know, they have no idea what what that what that professional look is about. Okay. You know, but I think the most common thing that I think the most common mistake small business owners make is when they come on and they say, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm new here. Mm. Now, for me, that doesn't matter. For me, right. it's like, oh, no problem. Take your time. Do what you need to do. Let's let's work through this quietly, calmly. You know, no problem. But I have seen program. I have seen program and contracting professionals oh, that's it. That's a fail. Mm. That's a fail right off the bat. This guy don't know what he's doing. If he don't know what he's doing and just talking to me, I, I can't see myself giving this guy, a con this person a contract. You see how that works out? Uh, yeah. So uh, I would encourage, I would encourage anyone before you're meeting with a small, with a program official, with a government official of any type, and you don't know what that relationship is going to be. I, I don't care if it's a secretary, whatever. You want to be put together. You want the kids away. You want the dogs away. If you're doing virtually right, you want you want, <laughs> you want as right. much control of your environment as possible. Exactly. Yeah. I see people go, oh, get off the table. You know? <laughs> right. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's that is my advice. And it's not even really a bad experience because like I said, I deal with the public, but it's understanding. I've heard the comments from other professionals. Right. Right. And how that, how those people have been selected out of consideration. And right. that, that's, that's not what I want for anyone. Right. Yeah. And clearly you, you know, like you said, you have a lot more patience and understanding uh, than some other people. I just, the, you know, my goal is again, right? Uh, people who are listening to me, clear, they're obviously seeking out the information. They want to learn. They want to improve. They want to be better. So I want to yeah. tell them that, right? I want to give them some of those mishaps. I don't really want to sugarcoat it for them because, uh, like you said, that's not going to benefit them in the long term. Because if we're not going to always get you <laughs> or someone like you, so the other person is gonna not gonna be so uh, patient and understanding and amicable. Yeah, I, I, it, you know, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting job. I love my job. The scenery always changes. I get to meet interesting people all the time. Um, but you definitely feel for some people, and you know, you you walk away thinking you wish you could help them more, right? But the system only allows so much. Sure. Right. It's, it's, it's a business at the end of the day. Do you, 
uh, we I know we, we we mentioned that between GSA and IDIQs and best in class, right? There's a lot of fun in going that way. What is uh, how does that affect what the so-called goals are? Or, you know, they're talking about right trying to increase spending with small businesses, but it seems sometimes when I'm listening to these things, it seems almost um, I'm not really sure what to believe is the best way I can say it, right? Because you've got this um, new legislation that talks about increasing small business spending, but yet, like you said, the numbers show something different. So that's a different discussion. And okay. I hope we get to talk about it another time because that ties into the history of the small business program. Okay. That ties into it's there's a long train for that. Um, but what I can tell you is, is the executive order, I think we're talking about 13985, right? Um, where where they're saying we want more small business, more diversity, equity, inclusion in the procurement process. Um I will tell you that a part of that was tied to programs uh, performance evaluation. Okay. okay. And, and it has, at least with with for my observation, it is in, it has caused a lot more interest in the small business program. Okay. More people are participating in our events. Uh, when I mean people, I mean more program and contracting staff are participating okay. in our events. Yep. They're asking questions. They're saying, what do we need to do here? What happens here? I'm getting calls from people I didn't get calls from before on the government side. Right. So I can tell you that it is percolating. It is working in in, in some ways. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what about the executive order, the Justice 40? How does that impact you? The Justice 40. Right. That's executive order 14008. It was just for initiatives. Is that I don't know if HHS is a part of it or not. I'm not sure. I don't know. No, no, no. I, I, give me a brief synopsis of that one. Uh, let me see. Okay, let's see. I'll pull it up on my screen. Um, uh, Brian is committed to securing environmental justice and spurring economic opportunity for disadvantaged communities that are marginalized and overburdened by pop pollution, underinvestment in housing, transportation, water waste management. Okay, pollution, so, housing, waste management. Okay, so that sounds like EPA. Yeah. Uh, they have you on here, environmental career workforce training program focused on delivering comprehensive training to increase the number of disadvantaged and underrepresented workers in areas such as environmental restoration, construction hazardous. So unless well, for under NIH, it talks about workforce training. What I can tell you, what I can tell you is NIH is doing something revolutionary. So in historically college, historically black colleges and universities, okay. HBCUs. Yep. The National Institutes of Health, under their small business program office, has developed a kind of um, a coalition of HBCUs, and okay. they have dedicated they have a dedicated crew to um, help those colleges and universities earn contracts that will employ those young graduates, those young minds coming out of those uh, yep. institutions. Um. And they've been and and NIH has been a forerunner of that for years, years before the forty came around. So um, I'm just I, I'm proud to say that I've been part of something that's been um, leading federal agencies and leading federal the the initiative long before they actually wrote it up. And okay. the previous administration actually started that started uh, I encouraged. The utilization of HBCUs. What is it called? How how would we find it? So if you go to NIH, if you look, if you Google NIH HBCU, yep, it should come right up. Okay. And the point of contact for that is Annette Owen Scarborough. NIH Path of Excellent Innovation Initiative. There you go. Successful pilot, which includes six HBCUs. Found it. Look at you. All right. No, no, I love it. Hey, no, I want to give, like I said, I like to give people actionable things that they can take back. So this is great. Yeah. And you, and you know, we, what I love about it is that there are so many small business owners that when they hear about it, how can we get involved? 
what can we do how can we support this um so it it's it's just and it makes sense because the population there are, you know if you look at the population in the United States there are more people retiring than there are people coming into the workforce so a steady pipeline of young educated people is highly valuable right no, I, I like it. I like it. All right. Um, running out of time here. So no, I understand. No, that's okay. No, no, no. I just want to be, I'm respectful of your time. So I just want to, I'm thinking about uh, other ways, other, any other pro, again with, you know, considering, I know you said you can go into history and things like that, but uh, what other, that HBCU one was a great one. What other programs that you think or grants, that you think may, you know, we can look for, or look towards? I just, I just, when you're a small business owner, I will say this before I go, when you're a small business owner, it's kind of looking at the federal government is kind of looking at a banquet. You know, you go to somebody, some, I, I just imagine some, some super rich party and there's, you come in a room and it's just full of food. It's like everything you can imagine is all laid out there. Right. Uh-huh. And you want to eat all of it, right? You don't know uh -huh. where to start, but it's kind of a, you got to understand you're limited by the size of your stomach, right? <laughs> and just like just like that, you're limited by the size of your time and your resources to, to go after everything. So as a small business owner, as a nonprofit or whomever you might be, if you're, if you're starting something, you have to be very intentional about every, intentional on every step you make. You can't run after everything. So you have to make sit down and really plot out what do you want your business to do? What do you consider to be success for your business? Right? Um, 200,000 in revenue, 5 million in revenue, 50 million in revenue, those things. And then, you know, and then how you're going to go about that so that when things come up, Oh, you got an opportunity to this event out here in, in Denver, Colorado. You got an opportunity to come and speak to this, or you got an opportunity to, because the federal government, there's a whole ecosystem that feeds off of small businesses. There are conventions, there are events, there are organizations, there's chambers of commerce, there's associations, there's, order, you know, and they all have fees and they all charge to come and they do if if what they're asking you to do, what they're offering you to do, doesn't align with what your intentional goals are are to, going to be, it is a distraction. And I see so many small businesses just trying to flow with whatever they think is going to get them money at the moment, and then it evaporates. And here they are back at they spend a lot of time and effort, and there was no 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 financial reward for it. So it's, it's, if there's anything I can end with, that's it's that. It's just to be careful and to be intentional, to know what you want coming into before you start a conversation with anyone about on the federal side. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes a lot of sense. I, you know, like you, uh, I like the way that you put that. There's a whole ecosystem that feeds off of this. And um, I've seen a lot of people chasing conferences, events, and yes. I mean, you can spend yes. tens of thousands of dollars easily, yes. hundreds of thousands of dollars if you try to attend all of the events yes. um, and to be everywhere at the same time. I mean, there's an event every week. Yes. Um, and exactly. so, yeah, I do like that uh, intentionality um, of the process. So, yeah, I, I, uh, I echo that. And, and, that, and for me, uh, small businesses know that, Again, I always say, uh, let the research guide your activities. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, and yes. so that's one of the things that I tell small business all the time is they say, where should I go? I said, let the research guide your activity. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's how you know where to go, what to attend, um, where you should be spending your time, energy, who you should be calling, who you should be talking to. Exactly. Exactly. It's a very good start. It's a very good point. And then it's how you go about it when you get there. But that's a very good, that's an excellent start. Yeah, no, it is. Um, and so again, I mean, I've got a whole bunch more questions. So like you said, we'll have to circle back around to a round two. <laughs> I hope so. I look forward yeah. to it. Yeah. So no, but listen, I, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, thank you so much for coming on today, sharing your insights and experience with us. We really appreciate it. 
Uh, and again, if there's anything else notes wise that you want to share with us, we'll make sure to have that at the bottom of wherever this is. So if there's any other links or helpful things that you want to send to us, feel free to send it over and we'll make sure to include it when we get ready to upload this episode. Thank you. All right. I, want to appreciate, I appreciate you, Eric. This, this process was, was easy. Yeah, man. No, listen, we're just having a conversation, you know, we're just having a conversation. So, you know, like I said, the, for me, uh, you know, I think a lot of people get upset or nervous, but I, like I said, I, you know, my job truly is to educate and form. Uh, I, I would like to, when people come to you, small business come to you, I want them to, uh, you know, again, your time is valuable. Everyone's time is valuable. Uh, it's the highest and best use of your time. And so again, if I can spend time with them, you know, beforehand so that they're better prepared. So now you're basically guiding people in the directions that you want them to go in. So that's why this is important for me. All right. All right. Let you go. All right. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, I appreciate talk it. Soon, talk to you soon.